Welcome to Beyond Sunday with Pastor Nick Williams. South Shore Community Church exists to help all people find and follow Jesus. Join us weekly as we talk through current sermons, theology, parenting issues, and how to have a gospel-centered marriage. We are praying that today's message helps you grow closer to Jesus. Now, here's your host, Pastor Nick. Good morning, podcasters. Today, we're exploring John chapter 6, 35 through 59, a pivotal passage where Jesus reveals himself as the bread of life. Now, this claim holds profound implications for our spiritual nourishment and our relationship with God. So let's start with a story. Picture a person who seemingly has it all, wealth, success, recognition, yet despite the external trappings of happiness, There's a persistent void in their life. There's an emptiness that they can't quite fill. They have achieved their goals, but still yearn for something more meaningful. This story is familiar to many of us because we've seen it played out, whether in our own lives or lives of people around us. And it honestly reflects the deeper spiritual hunger that Jesus addresses in this passage. As we journey into John chapter 6, Jesus has just performed the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, walking on water, healing a Canaanite woman's daughter, the feeding of 4,000. Now, the crowd, astonished by all these signs, are seeking him out, expecting more miracles and perhaps uh, another free meal. But Jesus shifts the conversation from physical bread to spiritual sustenance pointing them towards a greater truth that he himself is the bread of life. In John 6, 35, Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. Remember that I am is a throwback to the Old Testament where God was speaking to Moses and says, Moses says, who, who do I say sent, sent me? And God simply replies, I am. And so Jesus in this statement is claiming to be God. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And this claim is revolutionary because it addresses our spiritual hunger, not just our physical needs. And I think that's part of the point is when you and I come to Jesus, we're always focused on our physical needs. What physically can Jesus do for us? What prayers can we have answered? What things can we have him fix? What situations can we have him solve? And not that any of those things are bad, but we miss the relationship with Jesus because we're so focused on what we could get out of Jesus. I want you to think for a moment uh, about a serious relationship you have in your life right now, whether it's your your spouse, uh, your parents, your siblings, your best friend. What if you treated them like that all the time? What if the only reason you ever talked to them was because you needed something? How healthy do you think that relationship would be? One of the things I talked about this weekend is oftentimes we're looking for the miracle, but the truth is we need the maker of the miracle. Our our spirit is hungry for God himself, not the things God can do for us. So let me ask you this. What are the aspects of your life where you feel unfulfilled? Despite your best efforts to find satisfaction, you still feel unfulfilled in that area. Maybe this could be an invitation to seek a deeper relationship with Jesus, who is the one who actually offers true fulfillment. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet asks, why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? That's Isaiah 55 two. And I think this question prompts you and I to consider whether we are investing our time and resources in things that truly matter or in pursuits that ultimately leave us wanting. Another thing I see in John chapter 6 is we are seeking the wrong sources of those fulfillments. Jesus tells the crowd that they are seeking him for the wrong reasons. They were impressed by the miracle, not the message. And I, I think this reflects a common tendency to focus on the temporary benefits rather than the eternal truths. So along those lines, let me ask you this. What loaves are you pursuing? Are they the source of lasting fulfillment, or do they offer only fleeting satisfaction? Think for a moment of King Solomon, who had everything, wealth, wisdom, and power. 
But he concluded in Ecclesiastes 1, 2, vanities of vanities, all is vanity. His realization echoes Jesus's call to seek eternal sustenance rather than temporary gains. Now, Jesus begins to shift the focus from physical bread to the promise of eternal life, saying, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life, that I am the bread of life, John 6, 47 and 48. And this underscores Jesus' unique role in granting eternal life. It's not just about satisfying our immediate needs. It's about entering into a transformative relationship with Jesus, leading to everlasting life. This point is reinforced in one of my favorite verses in Scripture, John 10.10, where Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly, or, or other translations say, to the fullest. This abundant life is more than material prosperity. It's a deeper sense of purpose and fulfillment that can only be found in following Jesus. Now, in John chapter 6, verse 53, Jesus says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This bold statement causes many to stumble. They get lost in the metaphor, wondering if it's a metaphor or not. And as you see Jesus speak to the disciples over and over again, he gives metaphor after metaphor. He says, I'm the door. He says, I am the vine. And so when we get to a passage like this, I'm not really sure why it trips so many people, but it does. So are we willing to embrace the full truth of the gospel, even when it confronts our comfort zones or our religious traditions? Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, that we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. This reminds us that the gospel's message can be challenging, but its power to transform is undeniable. So as we reflect on this passage, let's consider the implications of Jesus' words. Are we seeking Jesus for what he can provide materially, or do we recognize him as the source of eternal life? The true bread of life invites you and I into a relationship that goes beyond temporary satisfactions, offering eternal significance. Consider Jesus' words in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. This promise is an invitation to find our deepest fulfillment in Him. My hope for you is that we seek Jesus, not just as a provider of miracles, but as the source of eternal sustenance, the bread of life that nourishes our souls. May His words guide our choices and shape our priorities, leading you and I to a life of lasting fulfillment. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, may you find in Jesus the bread of life that satisfies every longing. Thank you for tuning in to Beyond Sunday. We hope the conversations and insights shared here have brought you encouragement and have deepened your journey of faith. If today's episode has inspired you, we invite you to follow or subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an opportunity to grow closer to Jesus alongside us. Don't forget to share this podcast with friends and family who might be blessed by it too. Until next time, thanks for joining us and may God bless you abundantly.